we've got a review of design at factory farm here on a grab cab backhoe redesign for fabrication okay you got it are we recording yep okay so here's the overall picture beautiful design what i like about this you've got a nice simple let me get the mouse here so you've got a very nice simple attachment to the quick attach plate these legs coming straight out from a simple attachment to the quick attach plate the seat is mounted simply on a quick attach plate and you've got a basic holder mechanism for the pivot and the boom structure and everything it's good shape reaches there as if you look at the the detailed reach reach pictures back up which twice where you go here the reach is nice so i like that this uh, very slender design all that so this is the grab cab challenge on on the open source ecology back back though if you look at the the reach i mean look at this that's pretty impressive <laughs> what you see right there that good load i mean that is rather impressive what is that like 10 feet or so or deeper very impressive okay so here i, I want to question a couple of things this mechanism for turning the boom is interesting it's got two cylinders connected these this cylinder on one side and this other this cylinder from one side and this cylinder on the other side pulling it somewhat of a chain my suggestion on that is to use simple triple hundred weight chain super heavy chain so we avoid any complexity here 100 chain 100 weight chain is readily accessible in agricultural devices and so forth so you still use these two two cylinders so we will possibly <coughs> use chain so we want to ask lady wade to research trying to find that chain yeah i mean that's easily sourceable swiger has that our custom fabricator that's easy to get just look up the specs for 100 weight chain and look at the tor kind of torque or kind of pulling force that it can can withstand I think we actually have that on our wiki. Uh, double chain, if you look at on our wiki, this is actually pretty useful to go through. Double chain. I think we've got a table of chain strength. Double chain coupler. Double chain. Yep, this is a table. Let's see a PDF of chain strengths. Click on here real quick. Okay. Okay. So roller chain. No, that's that's a little different here. Okay. Uh, Click here and back up. Let's see this one here, roller chain. Where is the link to the table of strengths? It's somewhere. Is it here? Not really, but you can look that up pretty easily. So if we go back to the design, and where's our, our design now? Where? For what? Let's go back to the, the very cab design. This? Uh-huh. So that's the rotation mechanism. The, the chain is, and the rotation mechanism is not really shown here. Let's go to the, the quick attach plate assembly. So that's the quick attach, the plate that attaches to the quick attach. And we are migrating to the Bobcat standard, so we should be designing this for the Bobcat standard. I will go to Swiger, a local custom fabricator. To source one of these quick. So <coughs> this needs to be redesigned converters. to fit with the Bobcat. Is this now for life track standard? I don't know where you got this. Okay, so that's that's a question. A comment on this: What if we? So so in general. In general, the comment is: What if we use essentially four by four by quarter inch or heavier? They make three eighths inches readily accessible tubing, so that you can interchange parts with life track the key here is absolute minimum unique part count which means that if you're building a life track 
then it's not not a far extension to make a backhoe while you're at it or other devices while you're at it so that's the need for uniformity of parts so if we go to the boom where's our boom if you look at our boom that's a complex geometry and it's a weldment so that means you've got a lot of bead welding bead here across the whole length on the outside and also on the inside so if you look at those the detail of that that's you're basically welding all that together well what if we used a four by four piece of square tubing and if we need extra strength we can run two beams of four by four tubing in parallel to get the desired strength but if you take a look at the attachment as well okay so you've got okay this structure in general you've got this cut out that's either cut by hand or by torch table or whatever but what if we used a simple plate you know square plate right there to provide the attachment points and if we need more more firmness we can attach for example a beam of 4x4 four four tubing here and here so basically think about this if you instead of this boom you take a piece of square like square plate half inch 12 by 12 inch square here and a 12 inch square there and connect two booms of 4x4 four four tubing between it then you've got an easy way to make this boom now the devil's in the details on that how do you make everything fit the key is the particular pivot points and pin points but can that be done so and then imagine do we also have the stick the, the second part of the the back row? no i don't okay. i don't have it it's not there but quick question on this plate is it it's bolted on right so the magic of this would be these would be if, bolted you were to do this kind of a technique then you can literally have a backhoe construction set just like we kind of have the tractor construction set imagine that you had tubing with holes and plates with holes pre-drilled or pre pre-cut such that literally this is a construction set so for example what if you wanted to make a three piece backhoe one that has this main boom a secondary one coming from here and even a tertiary one for something like a cherry picker or a longer reach backhoe that's all feasible so so if we try to design it with reconfiguration in mind then we could be using these bolt together members so I'd be interested in seeing how that can be realized here in this design as opposed to because once you cut this that's a dedicated machine I mean you can't use this anywhere else pretty much but what if you can actually design it so it's reconfigurable so that would be a major design challenge that was the whole point of this taking the GrabCAD challenge and redesigning it for ease of fabrication so that means things like using 4x4 tubing and plate how would you adjust this well that's that's decent I would narrow down that's a pretty wide bucket I would maybe cut down maybe like 30 percent um, depending what you want to do that's a, definitely a wide bucket I mean it's good what um, about the teeth teeth I mean we've got a design for teeth that uh, if you look at go to our wiki we have a page on the wiki for tooth bar bucket if you search that and that's a, an example of the kind of teeth we've done and they work really well they're easy to build and that's how we basically built the, the small backhoe teeth we basically use this but this is a decent design right here teeth like that essentially easy to make from uh, actually what we use this time instead right. of the one by one by six inch shaft just use use one inch rebar and then weld a couple of flats like a yeah so that's how our current one of our buckets looks right now it works really well and that's a very easy design for the tooth, tooth bar I want to show you something that what Lady Wade said he's got this tooth bucket or bucket tooth file right here So he made that. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a rather complex design. It's it yeah, it works it's not by all means. Fabrication. We'd have to machine that. Yeah, I mean that's complex. Okay, so Lenny Wayne, you're listening. We want to probably go with this wiki page. Right? It's open Super source. Super simple. Too far. That's like Okay. Do that pretty quickly.
couple of welds and okay so we want to design they work well we were they're working yeah. well on our existing backhoe and on the tooth bar they work quite nicely okay so we want to do four by four by quarter inch square tube wherever possible that would be, that would be a, a good design to make uniformity yep. happen between the frame materials for the tractor and the backhoe and for other machines like the well drilling rig bulldozer we're planning on using the 4x4 tubing for that as well and many of the other machines okay let's go back okay, so is that about it or he had some questions here let me uh go back to the grab cat something um uh, All right, so what valves are you going to use, and do you think the MFG will have CAD drawings? In it? Okay, so what valves are we going to use? We get everything from circle center. That's easy for now. So the same valves that we use on the life tracks? The yeah, we could use, yeah, similar to that. They're, they're pretty low cost there. They seem to be working pretty well as far as surplus center goes. Mm -hmm. And then you can make custom valves there as well with uh, any number of sections that you like. Alright, so do you think that they're going to have CAD for this? They might. Okay. You can look at that. Mm -hmm. So, while you call up Prince, Prince is the manufacturer typically. They've got a lot of Prince valves. Just look it up and look up the manufacturer's website. Okay. Control for steering and raising the lift. Do you want to control for control the tilt from the bucket seat? Yeah. From the bucket seat, yeah. You want to have some kind of a means to unless you want to be step, stepping into the cockpit of the tractor constantly probably want to add a control for the tractor wheels it's themselves and for the loader so I haven't thought too much about it but if you want to be fully fully mobile from the cockpit on the backhoe you'd have to make make allowance for all those other tractor motions as well and that's doable because our current valves for the wheels and for the the cylinders are quick connect so we'd we'd like to see quick connect where you have a, multi, a large valve on the backhoe itself which can accommodate steering and raising of the loader arms on the tractor as well okay be the easiest from the ergonomics otherwise you have to get off the backhoe get into the tractor that's impractical for bigger jobs okay so we want to control the wheels and the tilt all from the back row. Mm -hmm. What is the max PSI plan for hydraulics 3500? It's 3000 PSI for the pumps that we use. Okay. 3000 PSI. The seat swivel are fixed. Depends on the exact geometry, but swivel sounds like the right thing to do. So you can turn, turn and, yeah, turn with the direction of the back row. Probably. Okay. Oh, he said, okay, this is where that design for the quick attach came from. So he said it's going to be pretty heavy with a 4x4. As originally drawn in the in the CAD, yeah, it's like we want to redesign all of that. But those kinds of weights, that's I mean, that's what you expect. This is heavy equipment. Okay. All right. Okay, cut the video. Well, I was thinking, since he's right here, this is part of the video process. Okay. Documenting. Yeah. All right. I guess, ideally, he'd be on Skype, but he doesn't have it. He's got to go use it some other separate computer. All right. Oh, this cutter right now.